pick up where we left off, with shipwrecks, snake eyes, and their pets being simultaneously threatened by wall spikes and floor saws. Fortunately, somehow, Shipwreck's parrot repeats the voice print identification phrase, and the system accepts his voice. The duck robot thinks nothing of any of this, and even goes as far as to wish them all a nice day as they pass. Attention loyal Cobra 13 workers! Control Cube 1 is completed and is now being readied for delivery. Finish remaining cubes with renewed vigor. Cobra! You know... Most of my day jobs appeals for higher morale don't work on me, but I bet they would if they used phrases like renewed vigor. Thankfully, this Cobra operation isn't entirely run by duck robots, and a human supervisor challenges the presence of a wolf and a parrot in their little slave city. Thinking fast, Shipwreck tells him that the animals belong to Destro, and apparently the mere fact that he knows the name Destro is good enough for this guy. Shipwreck also mentions that Hitler had a canary, which I don't think is actually true, but it did manage to get Hitler mentioned on a kid's show, and that's kind of cool. On the aircraft carrier playset, some admiral who looks like Dick Tracy with a beard tells Flint that girls aren't welcome on his ship. Thankfully, Lady J's not having any of his bullshit. Then a call comes in. Shipwreck stuck a tracker on one of those control cube thingies, and now it's showing up on the monitor. Even though the tracker's actually on the cube itself. Okay, I promised myself I wouldn't get caught up in the where the hell is the camera supposed to be game with this show, or I'll end up just talking about nothing but that. Instead, let's talk about those fatal fluffies on the Joe space station. Now they're cracking whips, making the Joes... assemble... something? And then... Dusty? I think his name is Dusty. Starts singing for some reason. When you slave for a cobra, sure is neat To do your work to a boogie-woogie beat Just let your feet tap and move While the prisoners groove with a bodio dodio reet Then they come up with the brilliant plan to turn the gravity back on and everyone falls down and it's funny. Not Hitler had a canary funny, but we work with what we have. Then the gravity goes off and on like 30 times, and the dreadnoughts crash their bikes, and Dusty and the rest are sent back to work. So there's five minutes of my life I'll never get back. Meanwhile, in the Devil's Cauldron, Cobra's putting their cube thing into place. A big glob of lava hits Destro in the face, and he just sands it right off. This is also, apparently, funny. Then the Joes rush in, and it's all red lasers and blue lasers and parachuting out in time. Then Lady J gets some lava in her face, and somehow she's not hideously scalded beyond all recognition. If I recall correctly, at some point we find out that Lady J and Destro are distantly related, so maybe this is foreshadowing of some kind? Back in the underground Cobra City factory thing, Cobra Commander delivers an uplifting speech to his worker drones. Sadly, it does not contain the phrase renewed vigor. Shipwreck kicks open a door labeled Chief Engineer, leading to an apparently important room containing vital Cobra secrets, like a laser disc detailing the technology behind those cubes. So, naturally, it's completely unattended. A couple of guards do show up eventually, but considering one of them is taken out by a parrot, I think it's safe to say they hardly rank among the upper echelon of Cobra guards. Then the ninja and the sailor escape on one of those hand-pumped railroad cars that you only see in cartoons. Back in space, the Joes are still slaves, encouraged by the Dreadnoughts yelling, WORK! occasionally. Then the dumb Joes somehow convince the even dumber Fatal Fluffies to fight each other, and then we lose another several minutes to monkey shines and shenanigans. Dusty, it's definitely Dusty, manages to hook up a thing that transmits everything from Zartan's monitor to the Joes, so that's something, I guess. Cobra's got the Delta Station. They're planting cubes throughout creation. If we don't start retaliation, we're sunk, and that's no bunk. Roadblock said we gotta do it, huh? Hold on, crew. Roadblock said retaliation, didn't he? Yeah! Said yeah! Well, that's just what we're gonna do. Retaliate! So, he told them to quiet down so he could then reiterate exactly what Roadblock just said? All right. Back underground, Shipwreck and Snake Eyes are being pursued by an angry Cobra mob. Shipwreck decides it's time to start the motor on that thing, and while he does that, the wolf pumps for him. No, seriously, look. The Cobra guys pursue on some kind of track... snake... something. Run them down! Increase thrust! <laughs> thrust. Somehow the two of them manage to escape back into a normal subway station, and they seem more concerned with being in the bad part of town late at night than they were when they were surrounded by Cobra dudes. And in the Devil's Cauldron, Destro shoots at the ground beneath Flint and Lady J's feet, sending them plummeting into the lava. Or, I guess it's like pink quicksand? We'll find out next time, I suppose. <laughs>